welcome back to Initial B. The Subaru is still with us. I've had it for three years now. There's a fair few things I've learned about it. And I'm gonna tell you five things of not to waste your money on when buying these. And one of them may even kill your engine. This one, I'm actually a little bit ashamed, to be honest, that I even spent my money on it. But the first one is a splitter. So I bought a splitter that looked great on, on a lad I know called Ben's car. It looked really good, especially in the photos, it looked good. I thought, yeah, I'll have that. It was about 20 quid off eBay. I'll show you. It did look all right, actually. I quite liked it. It did stick out about here just by OEM, factory aero kits. They fit perfectly. They look really good. The front end of this car, it's a great looking car. Don't put, don't put a cheap splitter on it. And then I did about... 70 miles an hour down the a52 um and it just this this front lip that come out just folded and snapped off i thought i'd hit a fox or something um so yeah i it, my, on its first drive of me having it at speed it just blew itself to bits so this next mod is entirely dependent on how much power you're running on if you've got the stock turbo in your Impreza or your Legacy, whether it's the Twins or an STI, whatever, up to 400 horsepower is the most you'll ever see out of any stock turbo Subaru. The T STI new age top mount or even the much newer stuff, 2012 onwards, perfectly fine and does fit this, this uh, twin turbo Legacy as well. You've got a small notch to make. It fits perfectly centered in the bay. You get minimum lag. You might want to look at upgrading the scoop size if you do track days, but for road, no problem, unless you're maintaining high speeds. It said the Legacy Scoop, 100, 115, 120 mile an hour, the air is supposed to pass straight over it. So again, that's something to bear in mind. Not sure how true that is. So unless you're at Santa Pod, where you're really struggling with heat soak with the, uh, with the engine on and the intercooler directly above, don't waste your money. Also, a front mount, the downside is the engine bay doesn't look quite as nice and you have to cut a fair amount out of that front bumper. Let's have a look. Just going in for a closer look then. You can see down here where I've had to trim the bumper and then across, there's about four inches missing from that piece. Again, here, you've got to get leveled up, got to cut that bumper. You do lose your fog light just in there. And then also that's because this side, the intercooler pipes there with the clamp. You can't see that from a distance and I'm glad I've gone black because you really can't tell. Maintains the sleeper look of the thing. Still looks great. I mean, we get to there and you wouldn't know. So a mod that you can buy that I would definitely not recommend doing. I've seen a fair few people's turbos go this way. The primary turbo on that side of the bay, on the, it has a downpipe on it with a cat in it. In that cat, it has a restriction. Obviously, a lot of people decat them or put aftermarket downpipes on. It's fine normally, most turbo cars love having a free-flowing downpipe, it helps them spool up really fast. The problem is with these, that primary turbo can spool up too fast before the boost controller can come in and restrict it. What that does, the propeller on the intake side spins over the 100,000, 120,000 RPM and can slowly open out, the fan blades can open out due to the forces. As soon as that touches the casing, turbo's dead. The main problem with these, when the turbo dies, is it dumps loads of really fine shreds of oil into your oil pan. Subarus need clean oil. It can take the engine out with it. Once you lose them bottom end bearings, well, game over with your Subaru. So the next one I'm gonna show you in detail. Pop in here, lovely interior. Oh, superb under here. Two things under here. First one, the vacuum lines. You have a black box of death just there on the twin turbo. Um, and all of these vacuum lines that are on the twin turbo system have all got numbers on them. You've got like a hose 10 mod that's down here. Um, they're all labeled up like one to 20 or something. Um, but yeah, don't take them out. It, these look better. They really do look nice. But because of the numbers, you know when people change them out, you can't always identify where they're going or where they've come from. And also, there's one over here and one over there, I believe, that go to the boost control system that have little, uh, when you look inside, they've got like a little pill and the pill's got like a 0.8 mil or something hole inside. That's to restrict the amount of boost that goes to your controllers. So if you lose them, you'll end up losing boost. Don't do that. This air filter, they're a big waste of money, really. Unless you're gonna run like big power or single turbo, so I can't fit the front, the standard air box on here, because my intercooler piping runs under and through this vent. That's where your standard air box would go. Don't waste your money 
on one of these, especially if you don't need to. The standard airbox, it handles about 350 horsepower. It comes on all the STIs of the new age stuff. Same as the airbox in this. The panel fit will do you fine. If you're interested in like the Mighty Carmon stuff or whatever, anything like that, you'll notice that every test they've done, so that these filters, the cone filters especially, just lose power. I'm a good choice with this. Also, cone filters on a twin turbo setup have the math here. So if, if you put a cone filter on, the air's not going through the math sensor the same way. So what happens is you can get an incorrect reading of the air that goes through, incorrect fuel in, could lean out, could get rich, engine won't run as it's supposed to be. Once you go to this kind of settle with a blink ECU like I've got, the car is mathless and it goes on manifold pressure instead, then I'm safe to run one of these. Good bit is, they do sound really good. So finally, the last thing I probably would spend my money on, set of these gauges. These are really nice. Um, I like them oil temp, oil pressure. Look at that. I mean, mostly they're just for peace of mind, but I like that, that's fine. So we can see 5.2 bar of oil pressure, perfectly acceptable. Um, and then it's only at 62 degrees, because I've not long driven here. But yeah, that that really sums it up. I wouldn't spend my money on the other five. Definitely don't decat your downpipe. Spend your money on some nice gauges, a nice exhaust, a few decent quality parts, should be sound. These cars don't need a lot. They come really nicely spec on factory. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Any other comments, any other questions as well, because I'm doing an FAQ on this soon, please let me know.